I'm excited to welcome on one of the quickest rising guys in 2022. What's going on there, bro? Not much. For sure. Well, I mean, we know a couple of weeks ago, coaches start calling you guys and you've been pulling in a big time offers the past few weeks. What, what's it been like? Oh, it's, it's been super cool just to know that I have an opportunity to play at the next level and talk to all these different coaches. And you came into the process with schools like Drake, Wyoming, Northern Colorado, Nebraska, Omaha, some solid just D1 schools. But what was it like really turning around now and being able to see some of the biggest programs start want to start offering you as well? Oh, yeah, it was a really cool experience because, you know, those are, you know, bigger, bigger conferences, bigger schools. So it's nice to have bigger opportunities there as well. No doubt. And take us to that first night. I know you were busy. You put a lot of offers out the first couple of days. What was that? When did the first call come in for you? Oh, it was about nine in the morning from an assistant from Wisconsin. And then I was basically on the phone for the next eight hours, just different coaches. I'd just get off the phone and then another one would be calling, basically. I know there's some story I was reading about. One was with, obviously, the Nebraska offer. Coach Hoiberg couldn't do it, but he still gave you the offer. And then I know you also said Crane was a little bit of a surprise offer. Take us to what that call was like. Um, yeah, me and Coach McDermott there have been talking for, like, over three months. And, you know, we've developed a really, really good relationship. And I, I wasn't quite sure when they were going to offer. I think at first he said he wanted to see me play in person. But then, you know, all the rules changed and the life periods got extended. So I think he just wanted to offer then. You talk about your relationship like with Coach McDermott. You're talking to all these coaches right now. What's kind of – what are you got kind of getting the feel of? What's it like talking to all these coaches? Oh, uh, it's, it's really fun, to be honest. I enjoy it. Uh, a lot of times we don't even talk about – basketball we just talk about life and some guys talk about how talking to these coaches is kind of guys you grew up watching coach from the sidelines you've seen them growing up and now they want you on the team they want they're able to just go talk to them call them up I mean what's that like when did it kind of start setting in for you that you realize you're able to talk to these guys you watch the coach for growing up oh yeah when all this process started uh yeah I thought of that too uh, just growing up you know you know, you want to play for one of those guys, and now you finally have the opportunity. If you're putting together kind of a dream coach in terms of what the personality is like, what the kind of play style they have, what, what are some of those characteristics you're looking for in a coach? Um, just a coach that I am really close with and, you know, have a lot in common, obviously. Obviously, we would because we're, you know, we like basketball. But play mm -hmm. style-wise, um, you know, more of an offensive-minded coach that, you know, doesn't care if you shoot deep threes and are – contested shots, stuff like that. They just, you know, let their players play free. Getting that Nebraska offer, I can imagine it was a pretty big one for you just in terms of it being the hometown big school. What did that be? What was that yeah. like kind of receiving that offer? Oh, uh, that, that was really cool, too, because uh, me and Ho Coach Hoiberg have developed a pretty good relationship, too, over the past couple months. And, yeah, like you said, it's the in-state big one. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are fans of them, so a lot of people are pushing me to go there, but I won't make a decision anytime soon. Mm -hmm. For you, is staying close to home or at least somewhere relatively close to home any kind of impact on recruitment? Uh, not a whole lot. I just want to go somewhere where I fit the best. Uh, distance isn't really a big deal to me right now. Absolutely. And I think about Coach Hoiberg and a lot of other coaches – is that they played in the NBA before. They or even coached in the NBA. They have that NBA experience, which is something I know someone like you obviously would imagine dreamed of wanting to play in the NBA someday. How much more appealing does that make a college if that coach coached or played in the NBA at one point? Well, if they played or coached in the NBA, they definitely have more connections to get players to the NBA. So I definitely look at that because, you know, that's obviously my goal. But, yeah, that, that's a pretty big factor. No doubt. And let's talk about some of your other offers. When those first ones started coming in for you, what was that first day like when you got that first offer? Oh, that, that day was fun because, um, you know, that, that was my first – I got Drake in the morning and then Wyoming that later that evening. Um, it was super cool just knowing that, you know, I have Division One, finally Division One offers. So, yeah, I, I've worked really hard to get there for sure. Take us through the days when you got those offers. What was it like and just what happened? How did you learn about them? Um, uh, I mean, they're just short, short and sweet phone calls. Uh, just most of the coaches introducing themselves. I had talked to Coach DeVries from Drake a few times before that, but uh, it was a super fun day, and you know, definitely a day that 
I was in a good mood for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. And all this has been during quarantine, a lot of these big offers. And for some guys, it's not been the best past few months just because they haven't got to play. Offers haven't been coming in. But for you, offers have been coming in. I mean, what's it been like not really even having to play that many games and still pulling in offers? Oh, it's a good feeling knowing that they're going off my past um, winter basketball season for my school. And I think I've improved a ton since then. So I think I'll be able to impress even more coaches once we get back out on the floor. Let's talk about that past high school season. It really was your breakout year. You had a big time year, which is what led to all this happening now. Well, how'd you kind of prepare for this up for the past season? How'd you get ready to have this breakout year? Uh, I had worked super hard um, after my freshman year because I didn't play very much. And then I hit a big growth spurt, grew about six inches over like a year. And then I uh, put on some weight, really, really went hard in the weight room because that was important. And then I just practiced a ton and got used to playing against high-level competition. So once we got to the season, I was ready to go. You mentioned growing, having a massive growth spurt. How did your body adjust to that? Oh, it wasn't too bad. A lot of people get, like, knee pain and stuff, but I never really got any of that stuff. Uh, it was just a slowly – Slow grow for – I think I'm still growing. I think I'm a little over 6'9 right now, but hopefully keep going. That's big time. And let's talk about that height real quick because I know you've talked about your position with player. You fit modern day basketball. You can play strongly for the two, four, even in some, time, some cases a stretch five. What's it like being so versatile? Um, It's really fun to play like that. And then a lot of coaches like that too because, you know, like you said, it's a modern day style. And so you'd look at this past season averaging close to 17 points a game, little over six rebounds. What's the next jump for you? What do you think you're capable of putting up next season? Uh, my goal right now is to, you know, obviously team-wise be the best team we can possibly be and hopefully win a state championship. But individually, I, I think I can bump those numbers up quite a bit, hopefully to maybe 25 and 12, somewhere in that range, because I'll have a more prominent role this year with most players graduating. And your leading score from last year, and a lot of the guys did graduate last year. So we obviously know what you're capable of doing. We know you're probably the go-to face of the team. Also, is going to help step up and kind of be some of the other surrounding pieces around Saudi this year. Uh, we lost six of our seven players that played last year. So it'll be me and most of the JV players from last year. But, I, you know, I've grown up playing with a lot of them. So they'll be ready to go. That's big time. And Nebraska's kind of an up-and-coming state. We – don't really know too many guys that came out of there. And now we see Donovan Williams come out of there at a high-level player. Hunter Salas is a big-time player. You, a few other guys are starting to really develop and become high-major big-time prospects. What's it like seeing the way Nebraska's developed now? Uh, it's really cool to see for sure because uh, I think Nebraska has always been super underrated. And then finally we've gotten a lot of high-level players that get national attention. So, you know, we're just kind of putting Nebraska on the map. For you, I can imagine a lot of big prep schools, national schedule schools, start to reach out to you, have contact while possibly playing that kind of schedule. Is this something you'd be interested in going to somewhere down the line for your high school career? Uh, no, I, I like staying home uh, in you know my hometown. Obviously, I've always lived here, and I like my teammates and coaches here, so I, I won't leave my high school. That's awesome. When you look at the recruiting process again, I know another thing you probably would have wanted would be playing an AAU ball right now. If you had an AAU season, what would you want to be able to go out there and prove this year? Just prove that I've improved on every single aspect of the game, especially defensively. Uh, I made that a priority this offseason. And, you know, a lot of people have told me I've really improved at it. And I think a lot of coaches were maybe questioning that about me. So uh, just to show them that and then, you know, maybe get a different idea in their head. And your name has started to pop up in some of the rankings now. You're in the 2022 class. You're going to possibly have, have a bigger breakout year this next year now. Where do you see yourself kind of rank up in the 2022 class? Uh, I don't really know about – I'm not really worried too, more, too worried about rankings for sure, but uh, I think for sure I'm a top 50 player uh, by the time it's all said and done, so that's my goal. That's big time. And in terms of AAU for you guys, what's it looking like? Will it become kind of a season for you guys, or what's that going to look like for this year? Yeah, we have a couple of tournaments uh, in here in July, uh, just more local in the Midwest. Uh, hopefully they don't get canceled with all the spikes in Corona. But, uh, yeah, it'll be just be fun. You know, I think we're going to live stream them to coaches that want to see them. So it'll be good to get some exposure that way.
Absolutely. And we did mention all the schools that have offered you at this point. Mm-hmm. Who's some of the schools that's had contact with you but have yet to extend the offer? Um, Oregon, Oregon, Oklahoma State, Stanford, Wisconsin, Colorado, Clemson, uh, Notre Dame, and Minnesota. Are Yeah, that's about it. That's big time. One of the schools I'd like to touch up on is something like Stanford. They're a school that obviously is known for high education purposes. For you, is going to possibly mm-hmm. a school that could have high academics and something you could achieve off the court as well, a priority or something that would be big for you? Yeah, that's definitely a big factor because um, – I'm pretty. I'm a pretty smart kid, and I want to be successful after basketball is all said and done. So, maybe going to some place like that would probably help me in the future, for sure. And how about stuff off the court? What is a career path you kind of thought that you'd like to possibly pursue after basketball? Oh, I don't really know. Yeah, I'm still uh, 16, so I haven't mm-hmm. quite decided yet. Hopefully, I'll know by senior year. But probably something in the medical field, I would assume. Gotcha. And we talked about some of the good up-and-coming guys in Nebraska. When you talk to some of those guys or just other friends you have in other states, is there anyone you've talked about possibly wanting to team up with someday in, at the college level? Uh, no, I haven't, talked, I haven't talked to really anyone about that yet. Just because, uh, you know, like Hunter Salas, he has a lot of, lot, of, lot of options. So I don't really have as much as he does right now. And I don't know about teaming up, really. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. And – when you look at all the schools that you just said that have high interest in you, who would you kind of think would be probably the next school to offer you out of those guys? Um, probably, I don't really know for sure, but I think uh, me and Coach Boynton from Oklahoma State have developed a pretty good relationship. So I don't really know yet, but I wouldn't be too surprised if I get an offer from there at some point here in the next month or two. And Coach Boynton's obviously a great coach, and we see the recruiting class he just brought in. A- team that's obviously yeah. a legit top five recruiting class, if not one of the best. When you look at a school that can bring in that kind of level of recruits, how much more appealing does that make that school? Um, it just shows me that they're a really good recruiting school and, you know, players don't want to go play for someone that isn't a good coach. So it just shows me that Boynton and their, his staff is really good. So I'll definitely have to look into that. We also mentioned the Donovan Williams factor. He's also out there as well as possibly other Nebraska players, if a team has a guy fr- that you've known that you're friends with, is that something else that would be kind of appealing or cool to play with? Yeah, for sure. Because then right when I get there, you know, I already have a connection and, uh, you know, it'd probably be easier to move in there. So I'll, I'll definitely think about that too. That's big time, man. And my last thing before I let you go is I can imagine you want to build a legacy for yourself, but what you're able to achieve on the court – as well, as well as what you want to do off the court, what would you say your legacy is and what do you want that legacy to be when you do move away from the game someday? Uh, I just want to be, end up being the best basketball player I can be, but more importantly, um, you know, just to touch a lot of people's lives and, you know, make, make the world a better place for sure. Absolutely, man. Well, I definitely appreciate you taking time to come on, my guy. I look forward to seeing what God's got next to me, man. All right, sounds good. All right, man. Talk to you later, bro. God bless. All right, you too. See ya.